I'll just quickly show a few cases and then uh, discuss how we deal with orbital retinoblastoma. This is an 18-month-old girl with uh, unilateral orbital retinoblastoma with extension to mid-orbit with no optic nerve invasion and no systemic metastasis at presentation. Another is a 30-year-old boy, 30-month-old boy with uh, no family history of retinoblastoma, unilateral disease, but with limited orbital extension. You can see this is the back of the eye and that is the optic orbital extension with limited optic nerve extension, but not beyond that. The optic nerve is free and no systemic metastasis at initial presentation. The third case is a boy who had uh, no proptosis to see, but then uh, he had clinical risk factors. He had neovascular glaucoma for which we obviously image. And then on imaging, we found that the entire optic nerve up to the orbital apex was uh, invaded. The fourth is a three and a half year old boy with uh, anterior intracranial extension going beyond the superior orbital fissure and the optic canal, but not really into the cavernous sinus, not really too long into the optic nerve intracranial part. The fifth case is a child who had un had a painful blind eye for with the staphyloma for which enucleation was performed. They had histopathology, but histopathological risk factors were not reported for reported, and no uh, adjuvant treatment was given. He came back with an orbital recurrence with displacement of the prosthesis and the implant. Now uh, we know that uh, the incidence of orbital retinoblastoma ranges from one to sixty percent. In India, it ranges from six to thirty percent, depending on which part of the country that you practice. Manifest at an older age, it can be primary where the children present with an orbital retinoblastoma, secondary when after enucleation there is orbital recurrence. Accidentally is when somebody operates an eye with intraocular retinoblastoma, does an intraocular surgery and then it disseminates into the orbit. Overt is on imaging you miss it, but on enucleation you find that there is an extrascleral extension or optic nerve transaction is involved and microscopic is when the pathologist tells you that there is extrascleral extension or optic nerve transaction involvement. By uh, literature, it has up to 75% to 100% mortality. By conventional management, which used to be orbital excentration, followed sometimes by radiation, sometimes by chemotherapy, but there was no protocol. But uh, when we adapt this multimodal treatment protocol, having learned from other malignancies in the rest of the body where the same three drugs, carboplatin, etoposide, and mincristine, are used at a higher dose, we find that there is dramatic response. We begin with uh, these medications. Three to six cycles is when we use after each three cycles we image and find that once the orbital component is completely gone, we do a safe enucleation. We don't do orbital excentration here primarily at all. We do an extended enucleation. Extended enucleation is when whatever that is attached to the eye, uh, fibrotic elements in, in even in conjunctiva or tenens is attached to the eye that is removed and block with the eye along with a long optic nerve stump. Children often go into thiasis in three cycles, but if there is a residual orb orbital extension that is there after three cycles, we go ahead and give three more cycles. So we have up to total 12 cycles to give. At any point in time, we can enucleate them. Similarly, this child underwent six cycles after which we found the optic nerve caliber has become nearly normal and then we ha went ahead. In fact, in this situation, we did a lateral orbitotomy, deep lateral orbitotomy to get to the orbital apex and resect the optic nerve right there. This patient uh, obviously responded very well and li limited disease that he had at the superior orbital fissure could be dealt with by high dose uh, stereotactic radiation and rest of the uh, orbit was cleared by enucleation, extended enucleation. In secondary orbital retinoblastoma, we followed the same protocol and this is MRI, the implant looks black on MRI. When the same implant settles down, he has good cosmosis, he did not need any surgery at all. All, he, all, all that he needed was uh, 12 cycles of chemotherapy, radiation sandwiched in between. This is the results we have, five years of, uh, three years of follow-up, 94% tumor free survival in 30 patients that we dealt with in primary orbital retinoblastoma and secondary and other situations we have similar survival. Thank you so much.